right. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Hello. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> so excited. Okay, well, guys, ladies and gentlemen, this is our final day of our DFA skin pop-up clinic. Um, I have had so much fun this week with all of you. This has been so great. And, you know, we put this thing together because we wanted to help everyone make the most of um, our quarantine. And Ashley and I are always getting people asking us about our skin and what do you guys do and different things, even outside of our skin, health stuff. And so we just wanted to take time during quarantine and share that with everyone. And so that's been our goal this week is to serve you guys and help everyone be feel their best DFA self and come out of quarantine uh, glowing from head to toe. And today's clinic is extra special um, for a couple of reasons. One, because we've got some guy representatives today. We've all we've been hearing from the ladies this week, so we're excited about that. And two, um, it's really, um, this, in my opinion, could be one of the very most important things to your health and well-being. And that's kind of the, the inside stuff, you know, inside taking care of the inside out. And so I'm going to pass it over to Ashley, and she is going to get us started today and introduce our very first uh, expert that we've brought on today. So I'll hand it over to you, Ashley. Yes. So thank you and welcome everybody. We are so excited to have our final skin clinic and thank you to all of those who are participating faithfully, tuning in every day and um, we are really excited about this topic because it's all about how to activate the anti-aging genes in your body that are naturally there and all they need is proper diet, nutrition, and other healing modalities to combat the effects of stress um, to be activated. So there's nothing you have to do to get anti-aging genes that are in your body. And um, if you take care of your body and your mind well enough, you are gonna be on your way to actually being able to nourish those um, genes and feeling your best. And not only, um, not to mention strengthening your immune system right now. So some of the topics that we're going to discuss today include nutrition, supplements, exercise, motivation, um, motivation to eat well and motivation to exercise, brain tapping, which we touched on last Sunday during Skin Church, grounding, and cold exposure. Today I have um, a, a very special guest, which I'm so thankful that he was open to participating with our team here today. Um, his name is Angelo Alvarez, and he's the owner and wellness director for Health Inside Out, which is a wellness center in Scottsdale that I've been attending for many years. I buy all of my supplements from there. I buy protein from there. I go there for massage, cryotherapy, IV injections for hydration therapy grounding and other detoxification and heating, um, heating heat therapy to just feel my best. Um, many of you know and have heard me talk about that in my normal day-to-day -day world, I'm, I travel quite a bit. I'm on a plane three times a week and I live a pretty um, busy, full schedule uh, week after week. So this really has an effect on my overall um, well-being if I don't keep it in check. And so being in touch with people like Angelo and being having access to services that places like he offers um, really helps me to just weather it all and feel my best. And people always ask me, how do you do it all? And I really take it back to these basic concepts that have helped me to um, really feel my best. So I'm going to turn it over to Angelo, who's here, and we have some questions for him, and then we'll open it up to everybody if you have any questions you would like to ask. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so my name is Angelo, and I am the wellness director of Health Inside Out Wellness Center in Scottsdale. Um, I've been involved with health since 1976, so that was, I was 16 years old when I uh, first got involved and I remember attending a health food store and and wind up 
getting this little drink and it was a green drink and it was wheatgrass at the time, but it had a profound effect on me. And it really opened up a curiosity. And from that day on, I started to really educate myself, hang around with a lot of different people and started to experiment on myself in this different types of lifestyle. So back then in those days, it was a little different. You know, we had to buy books when there were underground. I'm from New York, so there was a lot of underground meetings where they're anti-government, anti-pharmaceutical and things like that. So we had teams of people that we worked and they just kind of knew that uh, the, the way the system is in today's world, it's, not into, it's really not to our benefit. Uh, where uh, more and more people are sick today than ever before. But there is a big uh, movement that's taking place and people, and there's an awareness and people are tired, people are seeking alternative health. And that's where uh, well, we've been practicing. So our clinic deals with more of the holistic part of health and, and dealing with the whole body instead of just focusing on one uh, specific element. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Um, uh, I've been involved with, uh, with health for, uh, since 1976. So my passion for health has made me uh, evolve into this uh, awareness where I wanted to share with a lot of people and, and having dreams of opening a place to be able to share that. So I use uh, my education and the education of my peers around me, doctors and other professionals uh, of a team to create this uh, platform for people so they can learn. So what we do is we try to teach you, and it's not a way of eating, it's not eating, oh, paleo or keto, whatever it is, it's understanding what is food, what is not food, okay? And that's really the first start of it. The second thing is that we want to make sure that you, uh, once you understand that, to understand more or less where is it that you are? Everyone is an individual. Everything has to be tailored to you. Now, we're, when, when we're born, we're, we're a high performance vehicle, kind of. You know, we're, 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 it's a temple. Our body is like a temple. It needs to be nourished a certain way. And uh, the way foods are made today in our world, it's, uh, it's processed. 90% of our foods is processed one way or another. And that's what we try to really educate you on as far as uh, understanding what is it that you're taking in. What you're taking in could be slowing down and could be slowing down your immune system, could accelerate aging and all the above. So I know you have a few questions for me as yeah. far as in a topic. So Angelo, I, I, I couldn't agree more that it's about understanding, you know, what is food and what's not food. And I think that that, um, kind of is the guiding principle in the foods that I buy for my house and try to feed my children and, and my family. Um, and, and I agree with you, it's not about keto or paleo or this or that, it, it's really about the whole picture. So when you're looking at the whole picture, what do you think are some of the pillars of a healthy diet that everybody should be you know, mindful of and make sure that you are incorporating in your daily routine? Well, I think the number one thing is uh, is whatever the planet provides for us, whatever, what, what, what man does not make mm -hmm. is the start. So okay. when you, I, that is, for me, that is uh, the way I've always uh, been practicing is, it's, uh, is whole foods. Mm -hmm. And then understanding that not all, all whole foods are created equal as well. I mean, the way grains are processed today, the way legumes are processed today, that's also the way things are grown today. I mean, it's become more and more challenging today. Uh, another thing is diversity of foods. Once you are into a plant-based or you're eating animal proteins, uh, that you get the best source of protein that you can. It's not easily available to people because it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of people that are not gonna be able to uh, sustain and they're going to surrender to the fast foods and so on and so on because it's less expensive and the way it's processed. But they're all nutrient deficient, these foods. And that's what happens to the body. You, you, and today, obesity, you know, 90% of the uh, people that are obese are malnutrition as well. So mm -hmm. they're, deficient, they're deficient in minerals and certain vitamins and so on. So I think the pillars is basically finding out uh, that at least 
80% of what you eat, I, I kind of like to follow an 80-20 rule, okay? So, and even um, where it's not saying that you can't have these foods ever, okay? It's not saying, oh, you can't have, let's say, uh, a pizza or whatever it may be. But understanding that there are certain foods that we should avoid or should eat very little of, and those are refined carbohydrates, anything, any processed sugars, any refined sugars, uh, dairy, the way it's made today, it just really congests the body and produces a lot of mucus within the body. Some people are more sensitive than others, but in the long run, in the long run I mean, uh, if you're in a farm and you're having fresh milk, raw milk, that's a different story, but not the way uh, dairy is processed today. Mm -hmm. if you want a probiotic today, you know, you actually can grow your own fermented foods and, and you know, you'll make your own fermented foods and get some natural uh, bacteria that way. Uh, the bacteria that you're getting today in yogurts and all that, it's just, there's just uh, contaminated with so many sugars and all that, that you're actually taking something for a benefit, but feeding the bad bacteria and, and, and creating an overgrowth of, of uh, candida or so on, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. uh, so as far as, uh, and, and alcohol is another, you know, any foods, if you Google of foods that are inflammatory to the body, because that's what we're dealing with is inflammation. So any foods that you are eating that cause a, an inflammatory response is something that you should be aware of and you should kind of lessen or avoid completely. Okay. Um, so and that's one thing. And uh, so foods, as far as pillars of health, plants, Okay, plants are, are, are our friends. Uh, fruits and vegetables are our friend. And, uh, and if it's animal protein, that it comes from a good source, if you can afford uh, a reputable, you know, a company that's actually mm -hmm. having grass-fed uh, foods and are feeding their, their animals uh, non-GMO uh, seeds and grains and all that. You know, a lot of these animals are not really meant to eat grains but they're mm -hmm. being fed grains. And what they eat, we, you know, we eat. So, um, so just, take, just take that into consideration. Got it. Awesome, thank you, Angelo. And um, yeah, cleaning up my diet was probably one of the greatest things I ever did to where I thought, wow, I just don't have to think about that anymore. I just pretty much feel good all the time. System's working great. Um, well, not beauty on, starts not, from within. Not on the diet, you know? <laughs> I don't have to be on a diet. Diet. So it's great. Um, okay, so my question for you is, you know, there's so many supplements out there and, you know, we can take supplements for everything, but what would you say are the core supplements that everybody should make sure that they're incorporating every single day, maybe regardless of what they're eating? Yeah. Well, you know, I have a love-hate relationship with supplements. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't push supplements on anyone. The core of my business has nothing to do with supplements. Some supplements are needed. There is no regulation on supplements today. Uh, years ago, when I used to go to people's homes to make assessments and I would open up their cabinets and they have hundreds of different supplements there, not understanding what they're taking. A lot of them are, you know, overdosing on certain supplements because they buy a blend of this and a blend of that. There's all these binders and fillers and supplements today. So, you know, uh, do I take supplements? Yes, but I also detox myself, detoxify myself from supplements. So it's not something, I try to get most of my vitamins and, 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 uh, and minerals from plant, you know, from my foods. Now, mm -hmm. as I get as I get older, I said some of the supplements that I, especially in today's what's going on today with the with uh, with the virus in place, and everyone's running to jump to say, well, what can I boost my immune system with? Well, the number one thing you need to do is understand is what are you doing that can be jeopardizing your immune system? That that's what we just spoke about the right foods. So avoiding the foods that are causing an, an, infl an inflammatory response is the foods that we should automatically start uh, really being conscious of, uh, of eliminating. And you know, if it's, if it's out of sight, it's out of mind, meaning you don't buy it. You're the one that's responsible. But when you go into a place of shop, if you, you know, if you buy cookies and you have an apple and at the middle of the night you go and you're hungry and you walk to the kitchen, there's a good chance that you're gonna wind up going to the cookie instead of the apple in most mm -hmm. cases. So if it's not there, you're gonna to gravitate to the apple. 
some of the supplements uh, that will help with the immune system, uh, uh, L-nicin, which is an amino, which is a, an, an immune booster, uh, zinc, uh, vitamin C, all of your antioxidant vitamins are really important because those are your scrubbers. And those are, uh, you know, your scavengers, and those are going to help with boosting uh, anti-aging as well. Now, when it comes to aging, you know, there's so many factors that will cause you to age faster, okay? So, obviously, uh, anything that's creating an inflammatory mark is going to, ox you're going to oxidize at a, at a faster pace. So, you want to lessen the oxidation. You can't slow down aging, by the way. I mean, you can't stop it, but you could slow it down, or you have the ability of speeding it up. And, uh, and even tapping on exercising. Over-exercising could, a lot of times, there's a question where people say, well, exercising slows down anti-aging. To a point, yes, but over-exercising could age you. You know, if you look at a lot of these uh, extreme uh, marathon runners and all that, they age quickly. There's a lot of stress in the body. They get sick after, if you talk to them and interview them, they get sick two or three days later after a big, big, you know, because they're training so hard that their defenses are low. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so there are a lot of, you know, they're, and they're, you're, all of your uh, antioxidant supplements are, uh, are definitely, you know, I, I take them, your vitamin E, your vitamin C, your alkalopoic acid, glutathione, all of those master uh, antioxidants are really great. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people, you have to really take care of the liver. The liver works really hard for you, and you really need to give the liver support. So um, a lot of your uh, slowing down of aging starts with the liver and also, obviously, clearing the pathway of your colon. Anything else? Yes. Um, you talked a little bit about exercise and that, you know, the right amount of exercise can slow down the process of aging on your cells. But right now, many people might not be feeling their best, they're stressed, they're worried, or just overall unmotivated. What do you recommend to somebody looking to improve or increase their motivation to do the things that they know are good for them that they just can't get themselves to do? Well, I think the first thing is, to, is, is the mindset. You have to work on the mindset. Sure, there's, there's something happening right now that is scary. It's unknown to a lot of people. Uh, you know, we, when we tune into the media and we, we suffocate ourselves with listening to all day long bad news, you know, you're going to attract that. Uh, so I think, you know, with, with, with information like this, with podcasts, there's a lot of positive stuff out there. Sure, it can be a little confusing one person will say this, one person will say that, but still overall is on a positive note. I think right now, I don't know, I have to speak for myself, having this time off has really motivated to catch up on things that I needed to catch up on. Work on my business, have a better, you know, spend more time with my wife, uh, spend more time with myself, uh, mm -hmm. exercise more because now I have a little bit extra time. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to kill myself. Go on a nice walk, go on a nice hike. Go on, if you have a bicycle, go for a little joy ride. It doesn't have to be killing yourself exercising because remember, right now we are really uh, reserving our energy to and, and, and boosting our immune system. So we don't want to do anything to an extreme. You mm -hmm. don't want to eat too much. The more you eat, the more your body has to work, breaking things down. So your those troops are being, you know, uh, preoccupied doing that eating less right now i'm ready to do a cleanse i'm gonna go on a fast for you know five to seven days so i'm i'm, I'm actually looking forward to that mm -hmm. so i'm priming myself for that and that is a you know when, when i'm a true believer of fasting i'm a true believer of not eating too much we don't need that much unless you're a super athlete where you need that fuel but you know, if the, full, if the tank is full in the car and you go to pump more gas, and it's just going to be an overspill. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and that overspill is going to accumulate in the body somewhere, and you're going to feel it or see it. So, you know, less is better. I think it's just uh, creating a support group. If you live alone, create a support group. Uh, there are people that are doing things out of their home. They're watching themselves. And you can still connect with people. 
You know, mm -hmm. you can still practice that distance and go. I saw in my whole neighborhood, there was a whole team of women walking and they're all six feet apart and they're walking yeah. in the trail. It's the funniest thing to watch, but they were exercising, swinging their arms and, and laughing. Mm -hmm. and, and those are the kind of things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but positive, there's so many positive things. And when it comes to exercising, look, you exercise whatever, whatever makes you feel good with the exercises. There's so many different ways of exercising today. And with a hit of a button, you can go on YouTube and you can find out how to exercise almost any part of the body and, and you know, with weights or without weights. There's so much information out there. So whatever you're into, just, you know, do it, but do it in moderation. Don't over-exercise. Thank you. That's okay. helpful. Last weekend, we had a session on Sunday that was called Skin Church. And it was all about the healing mode, just like today, about the work in is the more important than the products you put on your face. Um, it was really focused on healing modalities, most of which I've actually learned from you. And I was hoping maybe you could expound on some of them because I've really found a lot of um, great benefits from them, but you can probably do a better job of explaining why they're so powerful. The first one, I showed the brain tapping device that I had bought from your office. And I love doing that thing. And <laughs> I mean, yeah. different when I difference when I do it regularly in terms of how resilient I am throughout the day and the, just how I feel overall. So can you talk about the concept of brain tapping and how you can incorporate that even if you don't have that machine? Okay, yeah. You know, uh, where I start, I, I, I guess, uh, Brain tapping is designed to help people kind of meditate, to be in the present, to be in the moment. Most of us in today's world, we're not present anymore. We don't disconnect. We're always connected to something. And we're, we're really on overload. It's really the uh, electromagnetic field is what's hurting us. You know, the computers, the, uh, the, the, the cell towers, our phones and computers, not saying that those things are not going to go away, but we're, uh, we're with them 24-7. They're sleeping with us. They're waking up with us. Uh, we're being bombarded. 5G is coming. We're being showered ra with radiation on a daily basis. So what does that mean? We're overloading with EMF. And the way the, way the planet is, Electromagnetic field is man-made. That's really high intensity of frequencies. That is actually going to nerve wrack our uh, autonomic nervous system. That's gonna put you on fight or flight, shaky kind of thing. You're always on. You're not sleeping well, there's inconsistency with sleep. You are sometimes wake up, there's brain fog, all kinds of different things, low energy or whatever it is. Because we're being bombarded, we're not shielded. So. Brain tap is just one device that we use to try to disconnect someone from that, that noise in their heads. Then we also have to disconnect. We use all the modalities like pulse electromagnetic field therapy. It's a form of grounding. It's, it, it, simulates the, it simulates the frequency of the earth. The earth has a magnetic field that grounds us. Without that, we don't exist. We're, we're electrical beings. So that is that gives us that slow electrical charge on a cellular base that puts the nervous system on a relaxed base. Now, what's happening in today's world is that everyone's on fight or flight. It's okay to be on fight or flight. You wake up in the morning, you go and you do your little exercise, and you're getting ready to go out that door to tackle the world. That's fight or flight. You're getting there. You're gonna you're gonna fight the lion. You're gonna he's gonna chase you. You're gonna chase him. That's fine. But when you get home and you go into your home and you lock the door behind you, that lion's supposed to stay outside. He's resting and you're resting. You come inside to recover, to rest, to, re to recuperate. But in today's world, that lion is coming into the house with you. So now you're, he's still chasing you around. You're still doing things, you're not disconnecting. So a lot of these modalities are beneficial, but the only way they are beneficial is you need to be consistent. You need to research it to understand exactly what it does and what it, that's what I, I, I tell a lot of people before recommending a treatment to them, go home and research it, do a little research on your own because then they have a good idea of what is it that they're laying down on or sitting on or doing or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, we use so many different modalities in the clinic to disconnect you and we do it quickly. And that's what we're trying to do is retrain the, the neural pathway to put you in a, in a parasympathetic mode. That is the mode that's sympathetic. You have the sympathetic and your parasympathetic. The parasympathetic is the mode that you're supposed to be sleeping in, eating in, relaxing in. That's your recovery mode. That's going to help you with illnesses and disorders, diseases, or whatever it may be. When the body is, is when there's a disease in the body, the body is not in a parasympathetic. It's on fight or flight. It can't recover. So we try to disconnect you in that respect. Brain tap is really great because it has not, it's not just your typical meditation. There's about 600 different programs. It can be on, on wealth. It can be on health. It can be for kids. It can be, there's so many different things that you can do with it. And it uses sound and light therapy uh, to, uh, to work with your brain waves to put you into that meditative state. Perfect. Yeah, and I um, I actually um, am a big fan of brain tapping, and it's funny, Ashley and I are really close. We talk all the time, and it was unbeknownst to each other that we were both brain tap tapping, and I was like, well, of course we are, because that's what we do, to write yep. the BFA, you know? So, um, but I love the brain tapping, and for me, um, boy, I sleep like I've never slept before, and sleeping is such a time to heal, but that's a lot right. of along with just operating at a different level and my, you know, you feel your subconscious taking hold. Uh, the sleep is incredible. Um, also do a lot of grounding. Grounding really helps me with jet lag. And yep. the way I do grounding is because I'm a little ADD is I will go to the park, take my shoes off, put my feet on the earth. And that's when I'll listen to um, either my brain tapping or I'll watch my podcast or, you know, do, even make yeah. calls, my feet on the ground. I'm sure people see me talking on my phone and, and I'm barefoot. There's a, there's a way of testing yourself to see if you're grounded or not. Ah, okay. And I can show, I can show you guys that, but uh, it, it's, you can use a pendulum and you can see if you're grounded or not. And we, we, we teach people how to really ground. It's growing roots and connecting to the ground. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times by just even thinking of a happy thought, going to a happy place, going to the beach or going someplace, automatically will start to ground you. And, mm -hmm. and breathing. Breathing is, breathing is one of the, is, is the most important exercise that, that you would do. It's, it's, it's going to, it, it helps with the, the metabolic rate. It helps with the nervous system. It helps with your lungs it helps you with sleep people do not breathe enough anymore they don't they're very shallow breathers so breathing is something that i'm certified and I, I i i coach people and i could identify what kind of breather you are and then work on where that trap emotion may be if you're if you're a shallow breather if you're a frozen breather i mean your heart's not breathing that chakra is blocked why is it blocked? Is there an emotional component tied to that or whatever? So there's a lot of moving, there's a lot of parts to it. And, uh, you know, I, I had a very, I, I, in my last certification with breathing, I had, and I thought I was a good breather and I had a very profound uh, where I reached and I connected with my inner child. And that was a really powerful thing. So when you can start doing that, your body, you're gonna be grounding so often you know when you're not grounded. So, and that's part of anti-aging. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But that's good. Well, Angela, we have um, one more question as we're wrapping it up. And we're, we're also gonna hear from Matt, who's, who's here with us today. Um, the topic is about cold exposure. And we lightly touched on that last week. I've been exposed to cryotherapy um, in your office. I know a big part of your practice is, is cryotherapy. And Matt and I went to a workshop a couple of weeks ago, and he has really incorporated um, the Wim Hof breathing and cold exposure into his daily routine. I was hoping we could hear from Matt, and then maybe you could let us know, Angela, ways that we can incorporate cold exposure at home when we don't have access to cryotherapy and some of those other items. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about um, your experience with Wim Hof? Sure, be glad to. Um, this is where you hear from the amateur on the, uh, <laughs> on the show. So um, yeah, so I went with Ashley to the Wim Hof uh, seminar, and I, you know, when I first uh, 
I wasn't expecting to get a ton out of it. It was just something that I'd, I'd saw on the Netflix show uh, about Wim Hof that Gwen Popper did on her new show, The Goop Labs. And um, it's supposed to, you know, from breathing and from the cold exposure, it's supposed to bring and help increase your immune system, um, improve your mood, fight disease, all those kind of things. So we did that and um, I've kind of kept, kept going with it. Um, I think for me, it's kind of like a diet in the sense that, you know, if you look at yoga or meditation or anything uh, related to breathing and cold therapy are something very common through history and people use in many different ways. Uh, but the Wim Hof method for, for me uh, is very simple with the breathing and the cold exposure, which are kind of easy to do because I can do the breathing techniques um, just laying in bed and I can also do cold exposure either in a pool or just really in the shower every day. It's kind of kind of easy to incorporate. Um, so that's, that's been my experience with it so far. It, um, it definitely has improved my sleep a lot. And one of the other things that was very surprising is that I always felt like I'm not, I don't really ever feel depressed or down too much. And I consider myself fairly happy all the time, but with the breathing, which does a lot of oxygen, you know, oxygenates your body and changes your pH level a little bit. Um, for some reason, I just find myself being a lot more happier than I thought um, possible, which is a really big change. So I guess, Angelo, I know you've been, I've, I've actually done the cryotherapy uh, at, at your facility and just was wondering if you could maybe just touch a little bit on what your thoughts are on how important the, you mentioned breathing, but the cold therapy uh, is that something that you really have a lot of people um, doing and think that it's something to, that's really people should focus on? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the cold therapy, I've, I've been doing cold therapy since 1983. I learned it in Korea in the military. I did cold weather training. And I learned the Wim Hof breathing back then, a similar breathing technique because you have to go into uh, – uh, hyperventilating in order to warm your body up, oxygenate the body and all that. But as uh, over the years, once I really learned even more of the science of cold therapy and how the Germans, uh, w one of their uh, main hospitals that they heal all kinds of autoimmune diseases, it's over, over 200 years old. They used to use cold therapy many years ago. They will hose your spine with ice cold water to create a response. And what it's doing is that cold therapy is shocking the system to create that response. And that response is putting you in survival mode for that brief moment. So that shock is creating an internal movement. And that internal movement is really, really important. I use cold therapy, not so much for athletes to recover, even though they come in and they're using it for recovery. There is not a lot of science to that. And what you're doing is if you exercise and go right into a cold tub right away, you are interrupting the natural ability of the body, reducing the inflammation on its own. Not supposed to be done that way. If you want to piggyback an hour later and then do a nice tub or whatever it is, that's fine. You got to remember, cold therapy is a stress. It's a stressor, it's a stressor to the body to create a response. So too much exposure to cold may not be beneficial to everyone. I have a lot of people that I refuse to do cryotherapy because their adrenals are shot or whatever it may be. It's not the right time for them to do that. They need to be more in a parasympathetic and heal. They need to change something else before just jumping into cold. But I tell you one thing, I recommend that I've been recommending for years, everyone should practice taking a cool rinse. Everybody. It will not hurt you. It will, it will motivate you. It will warm you up. Once you start practicing that, and then if you want to go and start going into a tub, and experiment that way. If you wanna go into an ice bath or if you wanna do cryotherapy is unique because I don't have to go into cold water anymore and it doesn't have to be so invasive, so it's available. I mean, if I had to tell you, if everyone to come in, I gotta put you in cold ice water for three minutes, it will fail, nobody, you can't do that. 
but True. in but doing it this way with the dry cold is easy so i love the idea of cryotherapy because that's what gravitated me to it when i first got introduced to it in 2010. i was one of the first ones in the valley with cryo and the way i use cryo i combine it with other modalities to create a profound effect that's why the clinic is designed that way cryo is not the main thing cryo is just one of the modalities to help if I piggyback it with something, if I do cryotherapy, shock your system, let's say you're a person on fight or flight, sleep deprived. I shock your system with the cold therapy and now all of a sudden the endorphins start to kick in. Now I put you on a pulse electromagnetic field mat and grounded to the 10th power. I'm retraining that neural pathway to put you in that parasympathetic. If you fall asleep on that mat for 30 minutes, it's like three hours of REM sleep. It's profound, it's powerful. And you can get to do that fast. And then when you incorporate breathing with it, now, breathing is your savior. You keep the breathing on. Now, the Wim Hof breathing is a certain rapid breathing, and it's the holding, the exhale, and the inhale. That's, I learned that years ago. I still do that today. But I do something called circular breathing today, where I'm breathing from the root chakra all the way through and out. So it's, most people are reverse breathers. They breathe this way. You want to breathe from within this way. And as you breathe that, and you're breathing with your mouth open, so it's your mouth, you're breathing in through your mouth and out through your mouth. And that is opening up those channels and releasing those channels of energy, unblocking them, and you're gonna feel, it's just an amazing feeling. But I mean, Andrew Weil has different ways of breathing, all these yogis, there's, there's all kinds of different breathing out there. Look, with YouTube today, there's so many guided meditations for breathing. I think everybody during this time right now should be gravitating to one of those. And it's about a practice, Matt. It's everything is a practice and you have to be consistent. People do not concentrate anymore. They can't concentrate on one thing anymore. They're too scattered and they can't focus on one thing at a time anymore. And that's what I try to achieve. I try, when I, when I identify that, I try to bring that all together into one focus or at least calm that nervous system down. But what you're doing is great. The Wim Hof. Yeah, I have a lot of people that have certified with him. He's a very unique guy. Uh, you know, I, I've challenged myself for years doing that as well. So I don't stress my body anymore to that extreme, though. Mm -hmm. right. Got it. I'm too old for that. I'm 60 years old. I was like, I don't need, I, 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 I could get it in a short period of time. Well, you look, you look great. <laughs> well, thank well, Angelo, you. Angelo, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Um, we're at the end of our session here. Um, we really appreciate it. I'm going to include your information um, in our follow-up email so that um, people know where to go to, to learn more about some of this and be integrated with your yeah. holistic healing approach. And I offer a 15-minute complimentary consultation. Anybody wants to fill out an intake form, I go over it and I just talk to them and I can guide them right. And we don't, and, and our clinic is not for you, it's not for you to depend on the clinic and hang out. It's, we just want to get you going and, uh, and give you a few tips and plant some seeds and hopefully you can and just pay it, way. Pay, and yeah. pay, it for, and pay it forward. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, well, guys. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll be in touch soon. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you, Angelo. Yeah. Appreciate your okay. time. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Um, so we are going to go to our drawing here in a minute. Bye, Angela. Thank you. All right. So thank you. All right. We are going to on, I'm trying to, here we go, gallery view. All right, we are going to go to our drawing here in a minute. Before we do, I just wanted to hear a little bit more from Matt about, um, we talked a lot about exercise and the effect that exercise can have on activating anti-aging genes and just reversing the impacts of stress. And you're a big inspiration to me just in terms of your consistency in you know, regular, you're an avid bike racer and you just really seem to be consistently year over year incorporating exercise into your regular routine. So can you talk to, to us a little bit about how that is true for you and how you stay motivated? Especially now? Uh, sure. 
Sure, I can do that. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, I mean exercise is is uh, always been an important part of my life. It probably came from sports first. When I um, after I played football in college, I was looking for something to stay motivated, so I um, started started doing triathlons and running races and bike races. I always was looking for something competitively to kind of keep me going, and I think that also helps with your question of motivation. Because, you know, if you have, a, if you just have to get up and go do something, it's kind of like when you have to meet someone at the gym or a trainer, you end up showing up where otherwise you can sleep in. Um, so that really helps me a lot to have uh, set up, you know, if, you, if it's running, you know, you, you say I'm going to run a half marathon or a 10K or a 5K or whatever, you know, exercise that you like to do. There's usually something out there that you can put as a goal on your calendar to get ready for it, which kind of gives you a little more motivation, a little more drive, because you've actually set something that you want to go achieve. And I think it changes the way you view it on a day in, day out kind of basis. Um, so I think that that is what's really keeps me going, you know, from a drive and motivation, but also just from a health standpoint, I think everybody knows the, I think, when do you mention the outside in or inside out approach? So I think everyone kind of knows what we, we like about losing weight and kind of trying to look good from going to the gym or exercising. But one of the things that back to when I first started racing, uh, endurance racing, you get really into heart rate and what your heart rate is doing and what your maximum heart rate. And um, that's where you see people have all these heart rate monitors checking to see how fast their heart's beating. But it really gets down uh, when you think about anti-aging to a numbers game. So every year of your life, and you learn this when you study heart rate, is you lose about one beat per minute every year of your life as you age for your maximum heart rate. And that means that's how fast your heart can, can actually beat. With that, the volume of your blood decreases. So when you're 25, you can, your heart can pump two and a half quarts a minute of blood throughout your body. When you're 80, it's less than a half a quart. So if you look at, especially the topics that you've been talking about with, if you look at your skin and your circulation, that decreased blood flow is really has a big impact on your skin, all your capillaries, how hard your veins get as you age. So keeping your veins supple, keeping oxygenated blood flowing to all the parts of your body at a much higher rate really, really changes the way um, time has an effect on your body. So that's another thing I think that just really, again, to Angela's that's point, great. you don't overdo it, but you know, you definitely exercise is important. Great. Well, thank you. All right, guys. Well, this wraps up our skin clinic. Thank you for staying with us a little extra longer today. We really wanted to have time to go over everything with Angelo and hear from Matt as well. Um, We're now going to do the drawing for our About Face giveaway, which includes a number of really fantastic medical grade products. And um, every entry that we have had from all the likes on Instagram and subscribing to YouTube and um, follows and shares and mentions um, has been tallied. And Wendy is gonna do a little drawing right now and we're really excited. Do stay tuned though, because we do have another body giveaway that we're gonna be doing next week. So even though Skin Clinic is ending, we are gonna to continue to load you with content and uh, send information your way. Also look for a survey monkey from us so that we can get your input. And um, if there's any additional topics that people are interested or curious about learning about, it's possible that in the future, depending on how quarantine plays out for everyone, <laughs> that we might uh, be able to do another one. So Wendy, I'll hand it over to you. Okay, thank you. And thank you so much for coordinating, having uh, Angelo on and Matt, thank you so much for your uh, input today. It's been awesome to have you on. And, um, you know, I just wanted to leave you with a couple of thoughts over what we just talked about before I do this drawing. 
you know, we have a couple weeks left, we think, uh, in quarantine, at least a couple of weeks. And a couple of weeks, you can get a lot done in a couple of weeks. And everything that you've learned in the clinic and then what we've talked about today and what Matt just said is so important. You know, you can put a goal for where do you want to be two weeks from now? How do you want to feel, whether it's mentally, physically, your skin? You, know, you can set a goal for all of those things and really do some transformation over the next two weeks. And so much of what Angelo talked about, um, you know, Ashley and I both, and Matt as well, have incorporated these things into our lifestyle where now they've just become a standard. So it's, you know, the goal is to never have to be on a diet and never have to do these things because it's just who you are. And so you can create that through going through all these things and having that, you know, self-awareness. And then one thing that I wanna offer that, really helped me a lot. Um, I read an incredible book called What Got You Here Won't Get You There. And in the book, I read something that has really changed my life because we always go and we make a to-do list, right? Well, why don't you make a stop doing list? What are the things you could stop doing over the next couple of weeks that would actually help you get to your goals? Um, versus just making that to-do list. So I just wanted to offer that because it came to mind when Angelo was talking. And now we're gonna get to the fun part. I'm so excited about this giveaway and thank you again for everybody's um, participation. And like Ashley said, we have a big body package giveaway. So keep the comments and the likes. We're gonna continue to tally and all of that. But I put in my, my beach hat, I have all these names in there, which is very exciting. So I'm gonna stir them up. You hear me stirring them up? Okay, you have a drum roll for me, somebody? I need a drum roll. Look away. Okay. Leslie! Wow! Leslie. Let's unmute. Hang on, we should unmute. Leslie, you Hi. are the winner! Wow! Yay! Yay. You gave a awesome. lot of love. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. Awesome, Leslie. Hey, Leslie, why don't you take one, just 30 seconds, and what is the biggest thing you got from this week from our DFA uh, pop-up skin clinic? Well, ladies, thank you so much for sharing all of these wonderful um, tricks of the trade. And I guess really the biggest thing for me was um, the dermaplating and the way of getting that glow, getting that tingle. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've done my own tingles for many years, but I think if you, you do it regularly, like you're saying, those kind of tips of the trade, uh, I started the Korean mitts, and I'm telling you what, Wendy, my chest area is all smooth now. All the little bumps on my legs, because I'm 63 years old, and, you know, things kind of get a little rough. So I noticed the biggest difference from neck to toe doing those Korean mitts. I love them. Oh, good. We're That's so great. glad, Leslie. So glad. Congratulations. Be really gentle on your neck and chest, though. Everywhere else. Can be a little rougher. Yes. <laughs> Wendy, will you? I have some thanks to um, Arizona Skin Lounge. We got a lot of um, additional samples and little things. So I was hoping you could do one more drawing. Oh, I'd love to. Runner up. I have some extra things we can send. Oh, that's so exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me do another shuffle. Oh, let me do another one. That'll work. Okay. Kate Adams. Okay, Kate, all right. Kate. <laughs> Yay, Kate. Kate Are you on, Thank Kate? Thank you so much. Oh, that's so, so great. Excited. Awesome, that's Kate. Well, why don't you just take a few yeah. seconds, Kate, and share with us what's the biggest thing you've got this week from our skin clinic, last two weeks. Thank you so much for being on. Oh, wow. I have really, I mean, I missed the Skin Church one, but I watched it on YouTube and I loved it. And I, I'm really into like NLP and all kinds of cool brain hacks. So the tapping was really interesting for me. I, um, I love that. And I'm I've been super interested in learning about it and that machine and, um, just like really setting Mama, myself yeah. up for oh, my daughter's here with me, <laughs> just, Mama. you know, really creating a routine and Mama, getting I excited about that. And I just, I really loved watching every day. Them. 
there, you're oh, looking yeah. for fun. Thank you so much for joining. Thank, Thank you. you so much. This has been so great. Oh, good. Awesome. Very good. Okay. Would anybody else like to share before we sign up? I just want to say thank you so much, ladies. I know it took a lot of time to get this organized, and this was amazing. And really, just um, having the fellowship with everybody too every day. I know I missed it the last couple this week, but it was really nice to have something to look forward to. So thank you so much, and I learned a lot. I've got to put it into action because there was a lot. <laughs> but thank you so much, both of you. You're you're wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, Darcy. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. Um, look for follow-up emails from us, and we will um, stay in touch and connected um, online through our YouTube channel and Instagram. Yep. Thanks, guys. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Thanks. Easter. Thanks. Happy Easter. DFA. <laughs> That's right.